Welcome to the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Around the Storage Block video blog. I'm your host, HPE Storage Guy Calvin Zito. I am at the Hewlett Packard Enterprise campus in Houston, Texas, and took the opportunity to take a look at some of the new Gen 10 servers. I've got Shrikanth with me, who is going to give us a look at this. Shrikanth, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. My name is Shrikanth Raghavan. I'm the portfolio planner for Rackmont servers. And what we want to look at now is the DL560 uh, Gen 10. Um, what's the one thing that you want somebody to walk away with after they see this, uh, this new product? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a highly dense scale-up server for compute-intensive workloads. Density is the key word here. Well, how about if we go look at the density inside the DL560? Absolutely, I'd love to. So the DL560 is a four-socket dense platform. It's a 2U form factor, but it can fit four processors. Uh, Gen 10 has uh, a lot of new things coming its way. But in general, uh, let me take a minute to talk about this platform. This is a great platform if uh, you are looking for a large memory footprint in a 2U form factor. So all of the in-memory applications like Oracle, SAP, SAP HANA, uh, SQL, these are great applications for this particular um, system. You can also use it for dense virtualization environments uh, where large memory is a requirement. So the, the 560, uh, first of all, let's start with the ILO board. It's getting a brand new ILO, similar to all other ProLine platforms, ILO 5, and it comes with significant security enhancements. We have the hardware root of trust. We have uh, new capabilities that are Redfish compliant. We also have a brand new uh, ILO service port in front of the server that will allow a user to uh, plug in his USB key and download support logs. He can also plug in his laptop and actually manage the server um, through this port. So that's a new addition that we have in 560. One of the significant changes that we are looking at is that the four socket processors are moving to a unified uh, processor stack from Intel. It will move to the Xeon scalable processor family. In Gen 9, it was based on the 4600 family, but that doesn't exist anymore in Gen 10. Now, this is um, good because it comes with some of the highly seeked RAS features that were available only for the four socket platforms in the 8800 family. So this is good news. So the reliability features, the serviceability features are coming down to 560. We will support all the way up to 205 watts, total of 48 DIMMs, uh, very similar to what we had in Gen 9. Now, 560 is a truly scale up environment uh, uh, system because all the way from CPU to memory to storage, you can scale up along any uh, dimension of compute. So a user could start with just two CPUs and then they can move to four CPUs. As you can see, there is a second mezzanine board um, that we can plug in um, that allows you to have two CPUs uh, in the first board and then you can add two more CPUs later. So you can scale up both the the processing capabilities and also the memory capabilities. Apart from um, the four CPUs that you have here, um, you have the drive cage in the front, which is similar to 380. It is also a modular drive cage. You can have up to 24 small form factor drives, similar to Gen 9. The new addition we have here is, you can go up to uh, eight NVMe drives, meaning one drive cage could be completely PCI SSD, or you could go with the premium option where you have the 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2, where the two drives are PCIe SSD drives. Great for caching and tiering applications across the board. It has uh, the GPU support the same as Gen 9. You can have up to four uh, single wide GPUs, no change in that. Uh, the flex LOM capabilities and the AROC capabilities the, uh, for the smart array, they remain the same. Not a whole lot of changes there. The one thing that we are standardizing across ProLine platforms is that all platforms are moving to a flex slot power supply. Now this was standard in the 300 platforms in Gen 9. In Gen 10, uh, you will have flex slot power supplies also for uh, 560. Now these are 20% slim than the original um, power supplies, so it is much more compact and it is also more efficient. It is 96% efficient, and you can fit up to four of them in a DL560, which is pretty important. So one of the hot topics in servers these days is persistent memory. Tell me about persistent memory in the DL560. 
Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so persistent memory we introduced in Gen 9 in 300 platforms and it has done really well. And now we are expanding the support across our 560 platform and in a big way. Actually, we can have up to 24 slots which can have NV DIMMs. So that's a total of 384 gigs of persistent memory in 560. Imagine what that can do for you for all the in-memory applications. This is the prime target for running huge databases. All the transactional workloads, you can bring them as close as possible with four processors and so much of persistent memory on board. Now you're looking at uh, sometimes as high as 7x performance improvements that we have seen for Oracle databases. So that is something new that's coming into 560 and uh, we are very excited about it. Srikanth, this has been a great look at uh, the DL560 Gen 10. I hope the people watching this have learned a lot. Um, where for people that want to get deeper and learn more, can they find more about the server? Yeah, they can go to hpe.com slash info slash DL560 Gen 10, and they will have a lot of information there. Great. Well, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you. If you've got any questions, you can always find me on Twitter as CalVizito. You can find our blog at hpe.com slash storage slash blog. Until next time, thanks for joining me.